Hello and welcome to another video. In today's episode we are taking another look at the Arch Linux installation procedure and in this episode specifically we are trying to demystify mounting of file systems. So in this video series we are looking at the different steps of this uh, official Arch Linux installation guide on the Arch Wiki and today we are taking a look at this step about mounting the uh, file systems. So in our latest episode, the last episode, we already started preparing our hard drive to be able to use by Linux and which means that we partitioned the disks in a way that we would like to uh, create the separate partitions for separate functions in our computer and then we also created the file systems by formatting these partitions and so today we are going to mount the file systems. So why do we need mounting? What is actually mounting in this context? So we already talked about how the uh, hard drives and uh, solid state drives contain basically uh, ones and zeros like by uh, organized in bytes and they're organized in bigger bigger data structures but we would like to store files and directories on those uh, disks and to do that we create file systems on that and the file systems basically contain metadata that the operating system can use to specify where is a file located on the disk what is the directory structure etc and so mounting it makes this file system available for the operating system. So in a, basically we create a mount point which is an access point through which the operating system can access the files and directories that are found on this, uh, these partitions. So in Windows for example, Windows has this uh, one letter uh, drive letters like A and B used to be the floppy disks and the C drive is your Windows main drive and maybe you have like another partition as the D drive for your user data, your user files or games or whatever and your CD, DVD drive also has a letter and when you plug in a USB drive or a USB hard drive those will also appear as different letters, drive letters but in a Unix like system basically the file system can be mounted as any directory and if you are uh, interested in these uh, things more uh, in more detail then basically I can suggest you to read uh, these articles on Wikipedia which is a very just a short look at uh, very easy to understand uh, cursory look at what mounting actually means there is also an article on Wikipedia about the specifically this Unix command which is uh, what the Linux mounting is based on and so the ArchWiki has also some description of how mounting on Arch Linux is uh, implemented, how does it work. So basically if I want to illustrate, so we already uh, talked about in the last video how the different uh, hard drives and like solid state drives in our computer are appearing like this uh, SDA and SDB drives. So this is like uh, A and B are the different drives and so they are located in the slash DEV which stands for device uh, directory. These are the block devices, these are called block devices and the different partitions on these uh, drives are numbered like 1, SDA1, SDA2 and SDB1 for example but we cannot access the files on these block devices directly. So we can access the data that is on these block devices by uh, different commands and for example when we created the partitions we had to access the disk itself like the slash dev slash sda for example so we can access the disk that way but if we want to access the files on the disk then we need to do the mounting and so in this default case for example when we have most of the system uh, directories created on this partition so we want of course this partition to act as like the root partition the root file system and so all the directories that are on this 
disk will be mounted under this root directory so everything that's on the boot uh, directory on here that's gonna be the boot directory on here but in this example we have all the uh, important things for booting in a separate partition so this is a, like a EFI system contains this uh, the EFI related stuff and there is a grub which is a bootloader so we want this to be loaded this is actually this is what we want to be in the boot uh, directory so we mounted it as the boot and so every directory that is on this file and every file will be under slash boot and we have these uh, user files on this other partition so we won't mount this at home so what is under slash home is going to be the things that are on this partition so how does it work during the installation procedure so in the installation procedure we have the Arch Linux, Arch Linux uh, live environment which is either on a USB key or or a virtual CD-ROM if you are using a virtual machine and so we already have this uh, well, the file system mounted for the uh, virtual file system of the live environment. So we need to have our new and empty partitions to be mounted on the file system. So we can actually copy the files on these, which for the installation we of course need to copy files to these file systems. So basically, if you carefully look around the file system, there is this MNT directory in the root directory and so this mnt directory is traditionally created for you to have a mount point to to mount a new uh, file system or not not a new file system but rather a, like another operating systems file system so basically if you are uh, what if you want to like mount like a external hard drive just for storing data or like a backup drive then those things should not be mounted at the mnt drive those should be mounted maybe under a subdirectory in media because mnt is traditionally for you to mount a working operating systems root directory here so we are going to mount this as the a1 partition here under mnt because this is going to be the root partition of our new operating system and then we have to create the new folders here for boot and uh, home and whatever so and when we create these uh, folders here in the mnt directory after mounting then those directories will technically be or uh, it will be created on this partition and so we can just mount our boot uh, partition to the boot um, boot directory inside here and we can mount the sdb1 as the home directory here so what we are going to do is uh, so when i formatted my disk i didn't make a separate partition for the home directory only for the uh, boot directory so let's go to our virtual machine so if i type in lsblk which is list bulk devices then we will see that there is the SDA and the SDB drives and on the SDA drive we have SDA1 and SDA2 partitions and so that's what we are going to use here so we need to mount the DEV uh, SDA2 partition as MNT because that is going to be our uh, root partition in the install system and then we have to create a new directory in mnt slash boot and then we can check what is going on so let's uh, go to cd mn cd slash mn mnt and let's list everything there and we have boot directory and lost and lost and found so the lost and found directory is uh, basically the ext4 directory for if you your uh, computer shuts down and there are some files lost during writing then it will collect 
those kind of uh, uh, lost uh, parts of the data in the lost and found directory so you can later find them somewhere. So what is inside boot? Uh, there's nothing inside boot because we didn't do anything. We just created as an empty directory. So let's uh, mount slash dev slash sda1 at slash mnt slash boot. And so we can check with another lsblk command that sda1 is mounted at slash mnt slash boot and sda2 is mounted at slash mnt. And so we can also just uh, change directory into boot and let's uh, list what's inside there. And this is, I have no idea what this is, but probably this is also some file system related uh, file because we have not created anything there. So there is uh, also, if you want to check more data then you can use lsblk-f which will also uh, tell you what kind of file system is on each mounted partition. So here you can see that sda1 is a vfat partition with 399.8 megabytes available and sda2 is an ext4 formatted partition with 8.9 gigabytes that is available. And so Basically, with this, uh, we got through this uh, part of the installation procedure. So basically here, you should check if you don't have like a separate boot partition, but you want, you have an EFI system, then probably you have to mount like an EFI uh, directory there for and mount the, or rather make an EFI directory and then mount your EFI system partition there or of course you use the same method if you want to mount a separate home directory there but maybe that's if you just the uh, home directory is not even that urgent for now but in some cases maybe some of the directories that like system directories you want on other file systems for some reason or other partitions for some reason then this is the point when you should be doing that I think as like a newbie user who are just formatting and uh, installing Arch Linux uh, for uh, their own use, like a personal use and a personal computer, usually like a home directory and a boot directory are the ones that you will be uh, creating separately. So I wouldn't worry about those things. But if you are interested, you can just read up on the internet like there are more specific cases and more interesting cases but I don't think we should cover that in this uh, part of this video. So this was today's episode on Arch Linux installation procedure. Uh, so if you liked it then why don't you give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more Arch Linux installation videos then we have a playlist here about uh, those uh, about this series and then the next episode will be up here and so subscribe up here <laughs> and leave a comment if you have any questions or would like to share your experience with mounting file systems on Linux and I will see you in the next video and thank you for watching bye for now bye